you know, I had clients who who said they, you know, they had had other therapists, but they really enjoyed um, working with me. I had some who came back multiple years because they just said they got a lot out of our sessions, which made me feel very good because that's what I'm trying to do is help them. And if what I'm doing is help helping them. So, yeah. And um, now you'll be able to do that, you know, on a bigger stage, helping one to many instead of one to one. One to one. Absolutely. Well, in a second, I'm going to ask you about things that are not your strengths and, yeah. and how you over time have maybe had some insights around leaning towards your strengths rather than what they teach us in school to learn better. But I remember my Clifton strength finder. I really like this and it is a good way to find out your strengths and then to see different ways that you can um, use them. So my number one strength is strategic. That probably won't surprise you. <laughs> Maximize. <Shocking>. Yeah. Activator. <laughs> a learner and a relator. So I think, oh, a strategic maximizer who's an activator who likes learning and relating, that makes a perfect coach. Yeah. <laughs> a business coach, especially somebody right. who can give you the right strategies to maximize and like a match, activate your potential. So Absolutely. I can definitely see how that plays out in my life. And I, I do notice that when I'm doing things that, I, that, are, or that are those strengths, I love it. It's not like, like I'm quote unquote working, but it's not work. Like I really enjoy it. Whereas where I'm doing some things like I was doing today, like tedious little tasks that an administrative assistant would probably really love doing. I feel like drained. Uh, totally. And, and, and I think um, even without doing the Clifton Strength Finders, which I think we both are highly recommending, it's, it's, it is great. Um, but your strengths, when, when you hear about it, are the tasks that you almost lose yourself in because you're just, you're, you're just in your own zone. And they're the things that, that you find that you could be doing for two or three hours and be like, oh my gosh, how did all that time go by? Um, because you're just really, again, you're, you're, you're doing something that comes naturally to you. And, and there's so many, it's not just, it's not just work. It's, it's your life. Where are, what are the hobbies that, that you do that you just seem to have a knack for, right? Yeah. There are the things that we can learn to do well, but then there's the things that just seem to be innately part of who we are. And sometimes it's, uh, playing tennis or golf or sailing or skiing or running or whatever. And mm -hmm. I, I was a runner for many years, but I had to work really hard at it. And I have friends of mine who it just, man, they could just run for days. They were just natural gazelles. Well, I remember when I um, came back from getting my MBA in 2015, and I also used this question with my coaching clients is like just three questions. Like what, I asked myself, what am I really good at? Mm -hmm. What do I love to do? And who is that worth the most to? Right. So it's interesting because what am I really good at? I mean, I've designed and sold tax shelters, but it failed the, what do I love to do test? Although I still sometimes provide, you know, extra tax shelter benefits or grants for my clients because I don't want them to miss out, but I'm not, loving that number crunching. Um, and then who is it worth the most to? I think people can add that question to uh, an application of your strengths because you can apply your strengths as you are, Xander, to being a public speaker for thousands of people or to something that wouldn't be quite so lucrative, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And, um... and what are you not so good at? Were you going to fess up? I will fess up. I, I mean, I'm not, uh, I, I'm honestly, I'm not good at, at the accounting and the bookkeeping. Uh, I tend to put that off. Um, I'm not really good at, uh, I will, I'm not good at writing emails. I will pick up a phone nine times out of 10 and talk to someone before I'll write an email or a text. 
Uh, I'll, if I'm, if I'm uh, texting with someone and it's going back and forth, I'm like, I, I, I got to call you. This is, uh, you know, yeah, I, I find anyway. talking to be so much, so much faster way to communicate. Mm -hmm. And when I have to work with someone who writing is their form of communication, that's challenging because it just, it's, I'm frustrated. Um, I, I just want to talk. So, <laughs> you um, want to talk. Do you find that you have any dyslexia? Is it, is it rooted in that or is it more rooted in that your superpower is talking? I, I think it's, I, I'm not dyslexic. I, I was tested when I was younger. Um, writing is just, the, the, you know, most of us type now. We don't actually write by hand, but mm -hmm. I grew up having to, we both grew up having to write lots of stuff in longhand. And I just write slowly. I'm left-handed. Uh, it's not all that neat. And it just takes a long time. And that act of, uh, writing and trying to get it correct is is challenging i mean when i was in when i was in college or in canada you'd say university um the best class i took in college was my senior year i had to give a two-hour lecture <laughs> oh my god that was great if i honestly i look back and say if through high school and college if i had been able to take my exams as oral exams I probably would have had a 4.0 because I know, I know the stuff. It's just when I have to write it down, it, it's. Well, I think for many people, it's some variation of, of painful. Yeah. Um, that's why this spoken author is perfect for you because you can talk out your book. That's easy. And this is going to be your longest book ever because you're very loquacious and have lots to say. That's really interesting. Whereas I think for most people, you know, writing is painful because it's not as natural as speaking. Speaking is the new writing. That's my thing. Absolutely. It's, you know, it's human. It's natural. Right. Um, and did you experience support in your family and going through school for your superpowers and your strengths? Or did you get the lesson that so many of us got, you know, you have to double down on I, there was a lot of the, you got to have your nose to the grindstone mm -hmm. and stuff. And, and, I think some of that is, there's obviously been a huge revolution in education and how people learn and that we grew up with, there was one way to do division and long division and, and stuff. And my daughters have been taught four different ways to do the same math problem so they can solve it the way you know, that's, that best suits them. And um, I think that's great. It, it did mean that after like fourth grade, I wasn't able to help them much with their math homework because I, I, I'm like, I can help you solve it, but the way I know how to do it is not one of the four ways that you, you that, that you've been taught. So, right. You know, uh -huh. um, they so quickly start teaching us. Uh, they do. They do. I, I, every day every day. Yeah. But I, I also think um, it's easy, it's easy as a uh, adult with a lot more cognitive uh, abil uh, reason, re cognitive reasoning ability to look and say, gosh, had I been able to do it as an oral exam, I would have done so much better because I knew the stuff I had as a freshman in, in college, I was in a history class and I had, everyone was coming to me because I knew I knew my stuff, but then they would do really well on the exam and I would do, okay, I'd get the B plus, not, not, not the A, because when it came to writing, I just, uh, it's just, I don't like it. I don't want to do it. Yeah, you couldn't express the fullness of. Your I couldn't idea. express the full. I couldn't. Sh I couldn't show all that I knew. But if you let me speak, in yeah. a minute and a half or two minutes, I could totally prove to you that I know what I'm talking about and I know the subject. And I, I. You got the dazzling A plus. Exactly. Or and not your classmates who had to deliver a two-hour lecture. Some of them must have been freaking out. 
Oh, they were. I was like, I, I mean, I was just, I was like, oh my God, this is the best class <laughs> ever. <laughs> yeah, and good for you. And yeah. And everyone else was, you know, there were so many people who were like sweating bullets and like, oh, I'm not going to get through it. And I got up there and, and kind of, they had to give me the hook. I was, I had so much information and, and, you know, they had to do that Academy Award music coming up. To yeah, you. like it was Time right. is over. Yeah. Professor's <laughs> like, really? We're leaving? There's someone else coming out. But I got to answer The lights questions. are going off. <laughs> I know right. you've never experienced having to uh, play the music up. <laughs> I've experienced that at events. The, the mic, the, the spare mic is always sitting on your table where, where it belongs. So epic doesn't just begin with one step forward. It begins with leaning into your strengths. So how can people implement this today? Well, so I want to make sure that, that I mean, again, I'll, I'll put this down, but if you go to gallup.com slash Clifton strengths, that is where you will find this Clifton Strengths Finder. Um, you could you can do the test and get your results. Um, gives you comprehensive breaks out what all of the different strengths are, so you can read up on all of yours. I think it's like thirty four ninety nine or something like that. Um, something in that thirty five dollar range. If you are interested in it, it is honestly money very well spent um, to help you really figure out how you work best. Exactly. And then the other thing I want to just add to that is if you are working with a team, make sure that they have different strengths because we're drawn to people who are similar because we're like, we have a simpatico uh, and that can be great, you know, for a marriage. But if you have a team, you know, you want your assistant to like doing the things you don't like to do so Absolutely. it's going to be different all right so they can go uh, they, i think if they just google you know gallup clifton strengths finder it'll pop up it will and then embrace who you are and how you work mm. try yeah. out new ways to work with your strengths there isn't you know there's not just one one way mm -hmm. to do stuff i i'm really embracing one way because i've spent a lot of time doing it, but I, I certainly, my strengths come into just naturally how I work and not really as consciously, like it's just sort of the same way that you're strategic. You just think strategically. So it comes off in all aspects of your life. Yeah. It can be tiring though. Cause my brain is like a Rubik's cube. It's always like turning. <laughs> I get that. But, but again, I think it's really important to embrace who we are, right? Yeah. Um, I, one of the things that I joke about is uh, clearly uh, I'm follically challenged. I'm bald, right? I knew I knew I was going to lose my hair because my grandfather and my uncle on my mom's side were bald or partially bald, and and I knew that was going to happen. So I had a couple choices. I chose to just embrace the fact that I, I'm going to lose my uh, my my hair, I'm actually going to go bald. And I, I really don't think that much about it. My mom's like, Oh, I wish you had it. I'm like, Mom, it doesn't make me who I am, you know. And it's so much easier to take care of. But again, there's just an example of embracing who you are. Yeah, I think that is so key. Even with the example of being strategic, which sometimes wears me out. I just embrace that, you know what, I'm a really great in the morning. And if I'm uh, if my brain is cooked by 6 p.m., that's okay, because I yeah. wake up at five, so <laughs> you Definitely. Know, embrace who I am, so do the hard work earlier. Okay. Now, What's now, the, the last thing that I want to tell people today is make a list of tasks and or hobbies that you lose yourself in, mm -hmm. and then look at where the commonality of those, those tasks are that's going to help you understand how, how you are working best. So the things they lose themselves in. Yeah. What would be an example for you? Um, 
meeting meeting new people, being curious with new people. Um, it's that woo. It is. It is definitely the woo. Um, I think the. Um, I find uh, sometimes I get lost in learning. Uh, I'm, I'm techno boy, so I like gadgets and, and learning about new things and challenging myself, um, the video editing and stuff. Yeah. Uh, I don't love it, but I also find that there's a certain challenge there that I'm like, I, I want to master that. I want to figure out. I don't want to do vid video editing for other people. Mm -hmm. I would prefer to be able to have someone else who that really is their strength and what, what might take me an hour to do, they might take them 20 minutes because they're snip snap, you know, and, and put it all together. Um, but you're learning some interesting things doing definitely, it. Definitely. And that's definitely. improving the final, the final product. I think too, like when we started this, you were really just going to focus on, on your book but now that you love it so much, you're interviewing a bunch of other people. So your podcast is getting longer and longer. It is. And it's, it's again, I think that's part of leaning into your, the, your, your strength of, I, I, I'm, I, I like to talk. I can um, interview people uh, competently, mm -hmm. um, I think well. Um, and people seem to want to, when I'm asking them to help me out there, they seem enthusiastic to help me out. Yeah. And you're just going to get better by doing it. Of more course. And more. Exactly. Okay. So those are three quick tips. So people can uh, go do the Clifton strengths finder and, and get more clear about their strengths. Oh, I think I forgot the thing, the one in the, in the middle. Embrace who you are and how you work. Exactly. Embrace who you are and how you work. And then consider when does time, when do you lose a sense of time? Yeah. Like doing a task or something. And I think that's really important because it, it, it's that sort of backdoor way of saying, where, what do I, where do I lose myself? Right. And there are yeah. people who, who really love um, the detail. My, my girlfriend has an incredible eye for detail and, and, um, looking, at, you know, for that right piece of furniture, that right color to, to complement stuff. And I, that's just not my wheelhouse, but um, she could spend hours, you know, looking at catalogs and online and doing all this research and she loses herself in it. So I could say there's a strength for her. Yeah. And that's great. You can recognize that and let her go play and then uh, focus on your strengths. So those are some really great things. So in a second, Sandra's going to tell us what we're going to be talking about next. Oh my. I'm excited. Um, oh. But be sure to go to xandersprague.com and take advantage of the goodies that are there, including a PDF that you can print out with some epic sayings that you'll definitely want to put on your fridge or on your mirror and keep handy to inspire you throughout the day. And you can also go to my website, thoughtleaderlaunch.com and you can get your thought leader starter library with the videos and ebook and audiobook absolutely for free. And so Xander, what are we going to be talking about next week? I think that what we're actually, I don't think I know what we're going to talk about next week um, is health and wellness choices. And I think mm. Um, get, really bringing it around to our own uh, how, how do we want to live and what are the struggles I'm, I'm going to be really honest about the struggles I, I have around you know the uh, proper eating and, and stuff like that and um, it, it, I think that's really important because we are not just one dimensional and it ties into when we're on this epic journey, are we taking care of ourselves? Are we doing what we need to do to be our best selves? That's a really important topic. And also as people have ambitious plans for their business or for their personal life, 
you can't achieve anything if you're sick. And also if you're healthy and vibrant and vital, it's going to, you know, 5X your energy and your enthusiasm. So that's really high leverage to talk about health and wellness choices. You've got me not, I have committed to not having any sugar. I don't know how long that'll last, but at least for a little while, I'm choosing very healthy to have no sugar. So I'll check in with you if you have any final things to wrap it up. But I'm Aurora Winter, the author of Thought Leader Launch. I hope you've enjoyed this. Be sure to check out our YouTube channel if you'd like to see Xander's bald head and big smiley woo face and mine. Oh, I don't have a bald head, at least not yet. Um, so last words of wisdom there, Xander. Really, play to your strengths. It's so much more exciting. Absolutely. More fun, too. <laughs> yeah. All right. Bye for now. Bye now.